Welcome, friends, to another episode of Fed Up with Roxy. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And Ducks. Ducks. It's, uh, boy, it's great to be back. And look, we've gotten a lot of great traction, a lot of great love for Microsoft Teams yeah. in the government. So I know a lot of government agencies are jumping on. So Roxy, I know you work with government agencies. What advice would you give for agencies that already decided to take on the Microsoft Teams journey? I mean, there are three quick points that I want to hit today. Okay. The three. First one is I want everyone, when you when you establish Microsoft Teams as a way and you're going to move forward in a government agency, one thing you want to do is you want to identify who your stakeholder is and work with them to develop those use cases that's going to really push the agency forward. And, and when you talk about stakeholder, I assume these are people outside of IT, right? These are absolutely people outside of IT. Because, and and when, you, when I say people outside of IT, I mean everything outside of IT, including finance. I'm talking about the legal department. Mm. I'm talking about, you know, well, not necessarily marketing, but could be marketing. You know, mm. talking about marketing. You're talking about users that sit in the field that work mm. on the different programs in the agency. I'm talking about everything apart from IT. All right, let's take one example. Can you share one example of a stakeholder and the use case you develop with them to make teams happen? Yeah, absolutely. If I look at one of the agencies that I work with and they have, this technically is, it's outside of IT, but it, it's not really necessarily a big department per sure. se. But if you're looking at their field employees, their field employees that work on different programs and different initiatives that sit everywhere outside of HQ, really using Teams to really conduct a lot of these inspections that they're going out mm. to do and really communicating that way. Or if I look at another Another agency that I that I worked with that was similar to a nonprofit, really using Microsoft Teams and working with the business side of the house to manage their volunteers to you know establish that line of communication and collaboration with the volunteers and with headquarters. Because I would imagine today, right before Teams, um, they would be what sending emails, maybe have Absolutely. WhatsApp, and then files it all over the place. Or it's text just, message, yeah. international calling, roaming, you name it. So, so it's everywhere. So now everywhere. Teams can bring it home into this one-stop shop. In this one-stop shop. Communication and collaboration. Yeah, right? communication and collaboration. All right, so that's step one. Identify stakeholders and specific use cases. Yep. What about step two? Step two, you want to have a, a significant governance model. You really want to pay attention to that so you can really prevent any IT sprawl. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that when people hear governance, they think, oh, it's too much, it's control. I think otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> I think governance is the idea of making it easy for people to do the right thing. Yeah. So, for example, like, look, we live in a democratic country. We all have freedom. Yeah. But there's laws and governance around what we do. Absolutely. I can't just pass the red light. No. I can't just, you know, throw trash anywhere I want. You can't just run over pedestrians. You That's can't right. do any of that. Right. But but these governance are in place for our own benefit. Absolutely. So the same way with Microsoft Teams and Office 365 in general, well, you could just roll it out and turn everything on and leave everybody do whatever they want. That's not the way to go. No, it's not. So you really want to have that governance in place so you can look at things like naming conventions. You can look at things like policy and group expiry or external access. Mm. You really want to make sure that you, you look at those things and then the automation piece of it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's good because, look, all these rules, I got to confess, <laughs> I don't remember every single law out there. I don't either. As an American citizen, I'm ashamed to admit, <laughs> I, I have not I have not read the Constitution page to page. <laughs> I haven't either. I know it's there. I right? read a couple pages of it, but not the end to end. <laughs> That's right. But then what you mentioned is critical is now you have all these governance policies, yep. the ability to automate it and make it easy for me to do the right thing. So I don't have to think, oh, should I put a prefix in the naming policy or, or uh, can I turn on this permission? If it's just happening behind the scenes for me, right. even better. It's seamless. I mean, it really it really helps a lot of agencies that feel like they don't have that much IT staff to manage this kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and and then really when you look at you know them not having enough IT staff, no one wants to go out and hire more IT sure. to manage things that yeah. can be automated. Yeah. yeah. And that's a power of the Microsoft platform. And if it's not enough, we have technologies that can help. Yeah. Can you talk about just one really quickly? Sure, sure. We have a technology called AppPoint Cloud Governance. Yeah. Where, as you've described, we can automate the process of provisioning, who can create and who can't create, when it can be created. Right. The process of managing as Teams is being used. Right. Let's say you're a Teams owner and you're not supposed to change permission, you can't. And then, more importantly, the governance around information lifecycle. Right. In light of 
you know, narrow mandate around records management. Let's say the project is done, but you have three pieces of content there that needs to be retained. Right. How does that work, right? So, so we have technologies to help with that. Uh, that works hand in hand with Microsoft technologies. Yes, you do. Number three. Number three. You really want to look at focusing on those power users and developing a champions group because. When you have these type of technologies and you're deploying teams and rolling it out, you can't do it all by yourself. The stakeholder can't do it all by themselves and IT can't do it all, all by themselves. So you wanna have power users outside of IT that are really gonna push this deployment and this rollout forward. Mm, absolutely, and a lot of times too, the cool thing with the champions, they yeah. have the ear of everybody else they in the organization. Do. They do. Like one example we had, we flew down to one of our one of the one of my customers field offices in Miami and we had this one power user that everyone, I mean, all 300 employees went to to ask, "Hey, how do you do this or what do you recommend about this or how do you feel about this or how can I do this at a quicker pace?" And this one guy was able to push that deployment mm. forward because he was that one champion that everyone went to. Look, uh, I know these three tips are practical, are useful, but we have three more tips in the next episode of Fed Up. Before we sign off, there's tons of resources out there. Microsoft has tons of resources on use cases yep. and adoption. I know you have uh, a we flipbook, have, right? Yeah, we have the government flipbook book that we recently developed with, out of Teams Engineering that really walks the agency through that deployment and what it looks like to have teams in the environment. Sure. And then uh, equally, we have resources around how public sector agencies can take advantage of teams. Yeah. We even have an ebook on teams etiquette for a public sector. Yep. So uh, we'll put that link in here so y'all can check it out. Yep. Until Other next time. Till next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>